In this video, I'll show a method to group market turning points into different levels of significance, allowing us to create a hierarchy of turning points so we can organize and quantify market structure at multiple scales. To start, we need to find alternating turning points in the market. I will use the directional change algorithm to identify them. I covered directional change in my previous video, but I'll explain it here as I've re-implemented the algorithm in a different way for this video. Directional change always finds alternating extremes from top to bottom and bottom to top. The white lines connect each confirmed extreme. At this point in time, the last confirmed extreme was a bottom, so we are currently in an upward move looking for the next top. To do this, we keep track of the highest price seen since the bottom, drawn with an orange line. This highest price is the pending next top. When the next candle comes in, we check if it had a high that was higher than the pending top. Here it did not, so we now check if the low of the candle was below the confirmation threshold, drawn in blue. The confirmation threshold is the highest price minus the average true range. The low wasn't low enough to confirm, so we continue. Again, no new high, and not low enough to confirm. On this next candle, we did get a higher high, so we update the pending high. The market continues making higher highs for the next few bars, so we continue to update the pending high as they come in. Finally, we don't make a new high, and we find a low that goes below the confirmation threshold. We can now confirm the top. From here, we do the same procedure, but symmetrically for the lows. We keep track of the lowest price since the top. This will be our pending bottom. We update it whenever a lower price is found. If a new low isn't found, we check if the high of the candle is above the confirmation threshold. The lowest price plus the average true range. Here, the high is above the threshold, so we can confirm the bottom. Now we set up for the next top and start again. The code on the left is the heart of the directional change algorithm, but now I'll go over the rest of the directional change code. I made this data class to store all the information about a local extreme. We store the type, the price, the index, and the timestamp of the extreme. Because we can only identify local tops and bottoms with hindsight, I also store the index and timestamp of when the extreme is confirmed. I implemented the directional change algorithm using this class. We have to pick a look back for the average true range. Here I'm using 1 minute Bitcoin data, so I opted for a 24 hour look back. I wouldn't optimize the look back or think about it too much, just use common sense and pick a reasonably long look back for your data. To use the class, we loop through all the data and on each new bar call the classes update function. The update function starts by computing the current average true range value. If we have less data than the ATR look back, we do nothing. The first time we have a full look back window, we compute the sum of average true range values. Then on every update after that, we add the newest true range value and subtract the oldest true range value to maintain the sum. Then we divide the sum by the window to get the average true range. Then we get to the main part of the algorithm, what I showed during the visualization. When new extremes are confirmed, I call this new extreme function. It's just a wrapper for creating an instance of that data class and appending it to the list of extremes. With this ATR directional change, we can find small scale tops and bottoms directly from candlestick data. Most of these extremes are insignificant and possibly just noise, but let's hide the price and just look at the extremes so we can take it a step further. What if we found a top surrounded by two lower tops or a bottom surrounded by two higher bottoms? These tops and bottoms are more pronounced than others, a new level or scale of extremes. If we find them all and connect the dots, we get this. There can be situations where we have two tops in a row without a bottom between them. So if we encounter a situation like this, I'll upgrade the lowest bottom between the two tops. Now we can zoom out and hide the previous level of extremes. We are left with something very similar, and we can just do it again. Upgrade the tops surrounded by lower tops, and upgrade the bottoms surrounded by higher bottoms. And we could go again and again, but I think you get the point. We're recursively creating different scales of market structure. I'll refer to the tops and bottoms produced by directional change as level 0, and levels 1, 2, 3, and so on will be the tops and bottoms found from the prior level. I've implemented the hierarchical approach with this class. We pass it the number of levels or scales to track and the ATR look back. Just like the directional change class, we just loop through the data and call the update function on each new bar. Under the hood, the hierarchical extremes class is using the directional change class. All the extremes found are stored in a list of lists. Each list stores the local extreme of its corresponding level. The class's update function first calls the directional change update. We compare the length of extremes before and after the update to see if we have a new extreme confirmed. These functions are called whenever a new extreme at a given level is confirmed. We pass the level of the newly confirmed extreme, then the index price and timestamp of the current bar. Let's say we just confirmed a new local top and go over the new top function. This function is responsible for upgrading local tops to the next level. If it is called on a new level zero top, it could potentially add a level one top. It is called every time a new local top is confirmed. 
This function is recursive. This conditional return will break the recursive loop once the specified number of levels is reached. First, we get the newly confirmed top. We upgrade tops surrounded by two lower tops, so we need at least three to continue. Since the tops and bottoms always alternate, the previous tops will be at the current index minus two, four, six, and so on. So if the current index is less than four, we don't yet have three tops to work with. We then get the previous top. The previous top is the one that could be upgraded. The newly confirmed top needs to be lower than the previous. Next, we find the previous extreme at the next level. If the last extreme at the next level was a bottom, we ensure that the top we are considering upgrading has a higher price. Now we need to find a top before the one we're considering upgrading. The loop is to deal with the case of equal prices. Most of the time, this loop will only have one iteration. This prior top cannot be greater than the one we're considering upgrading. We only check tops after the previous extreme at the next level. If the prior top has an equal price to the one we're considering upgrading, we will move it back. So if there was a true double top with equal prices, the first time that high price is reached would be the one to upgrade. If we've made it here in the code, we can now upgrade this top. We copy the local extreme from the previous level, and we update the confirmation attributes, as confirming an extreme at a higher level takes more hindsight. There can be times where we have two upgraded tops in a row, without a bottom upgraded in between. We must maintain the alternating behavior, so if we do find two upgraded tops in a row, we check every bottom between them and select the one with the lowest price to upgrade. Then append that upgraded bottom first and call the new bottom function. Then after checking for that situation, we append the upgraded top and recursively call this function again to check at the next level. The new bottom function is nearly identical to what we just went over, but all the comparisons are reversed. In fact, the code was so similar that if you go to GitHub and look at the code, you'll see I made just one function called new extreme with an additional parameter for the type, one for tops, negative one for bottoms. And I made a helper function that flips the comparison depending on the type we're dealing with. Here's the algorithm running, tracking three levels. The white is level zero, the directional change extremes, blue is level one, and purple is level two. There is no redrawing. Once a top or bottom is drawn, it is confirmed and remains unchanged. Notice there is much more delay in identifying extremes at higher levels. The purple level two lines are drawn quite a while after the actual top or bottom happens. I got this idea from the chapter on market structure from Larry Williams' book, Long-Term Secrets to Short-Term Trading. My implementation deviates quite a bit from what the book describes, but the core idea is the same. The book also has a lot of other content, and I think it's worth reading. I'll link to it below. There are a number of things one could use higher level extremes for, such as stops or entry rules, and at the very least, it looks cool. I have a few ideas for future videos that may use this, so you should subscribe, like the video, and comment several times to boost my engagement. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.